views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to welcome you to the Dr. Pat Show. I want to welcome you to Transformation Talk Radio. And I want to welcome you to an extraordinary show. I am so thrilled to be introducing you to my special guest today, one of our new hosts, Debbie Pokornik, who's joining me on the show today. Now, think about this. When I announced about a year ago, and I did this, and I said, you know, We figured out that moms are, first of all, the most technologically savvy people on the planet, that there is an entire organization that decided that what they were going to do is they were going to unlock the secrets to who moms were and how they are plugged in. And what, what I love about this is Debbie has figured this out as well. But more importantly, why is it that the entire mainstream media for decades and decades and decades has not included them in talk radio? Well, we knew it 14 years ago. So did Debbie. And today we are thrilled to share with all of you what? Helping everyday moms create an extraordinary life. Women have worked hard to establish their worth in society. They've become worn down. They've turned out from what makes them powerful. Just not quite sure how to rebuild that resilience they have. But what is it that Debbie has discovered? Today, you're going to hear about our passion and our purpose. As a semi-retired mom, a green tea enthusiast, just like me, I love my green tea, an award-winning author, social worker, enlightenment guide. She is the chief empowerment officer for her company. Yep, that's right. You got two people talking here right now. We decided to go company, but our own company. Now, here today, you're going to hear... What is it that she questioned about herself? What do many, many other moms question about themselves? And what does she do to make sure that kids, moms, get the tools, get the compassion, and get the mojo on that they deserve? Debbie, it's great to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Pat. This is so exciting. And that was a a wonderful intro. Thank you so much. Well, I want to talk about you for a minute because we are thrilled that we are going to be broadcasting your show. I want to ask you this question. It's one that I have asked pretty much almost everybody. Benny has heard me uh, ask this question like 6,000 times now. (laughs) I gave everybody a brief introduction, but there's so much I didn't share. What are some of the challenges? What are some of the obstacles that you personally have had to overcome to bring you to this this very moment oh my gosh well we could take well over the whole hour just on that and yet when somebody asks me about my life I say you know what I have had such a blessed life it has been a fantastic 
experience. And yet I have had everything from a, a major fall off of a chairlift to almost getting fired from my first real career job to uh, falling off a horse and almost getting smashed into a post. <laughs> all, <laughs> all kinds of, of things that have come up. But you know, I have to say that the greatest challenge was when I was pregnant with my child. I was in the faculty of social work. And so that faculty asks a lot of questions, right? The students are there to ask questions. And so they're asking me about the kind of mom I'm going to be. And, you know, if I'm going to spank my child, if I'm going to have a family bed, how long am I going to breastfeed for? And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I, I don't know. And it made me really stop and look at what I was getting into. I thought, you know, I, I want to be a really great mom. I have no idea how I'm going to do that. And so honestly, that was my biggest challenge was raising kids and, and learning how to be aware and tuned in to what kinds of things strengthened me and what kind of things weakened me and what I was doing. I don't like to call them right and wrong, but which were the growing points and which were the parts I could just sail through. And uh, so that really parenting has been my greatest challenge of all. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is that there are things uh, when people say this, Debbie, right? When people say, I don't even know what I don't know. Mm. I think of parenting. <laughs> yes, yes. And yet there is a really strong myth out there that parenting is natural. And if we believe that, then we think that we should automatically know how to do it. And we don't. If it was natural, we'd all do it the same way, just like, you know, how a child will learn how to walk. They do it the same basic way, unless there's something getting in the way of them being able to walk. They learn how to do it because it's natural. But parenting is not natural. So there's a lot of learning that happens. Yeah. Okay. So what is it that got you to say, wait a minute, I have a message and I want to help moms. What is it that was that tipping point to get you there so that you could say, I am finding my purpose right now? <laughs> Right. Well, yes, absolutely. And you know how the universe works, how it gives you signals and little pushes. And then if you don't listen, it kind of like shoves you really hard. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do I know that? You know, yeah. I mean, I know that that one's like being in front of those 16 wheelers that my dad used to drive. Boy, I don't want to do that too much. But is that what happened to no. you? Well, there was just a lot of pushing. Now, thankfully, I paid attention to the messages that were coming and I, I followed because I was one of those people that didn't have a really strong purpose, a sense of purpose. I didn't know what I wanted to, to be when I grew up. And I've always felt when I was young, like there was something wrong with me because people mm. would say, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I think, um, older, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, so, that's true. Yeah. We never said we want, remember when we were younger, we never said, oh, I'd like to be younger. We always said we'd like to be older. Now I that know. we're older, what are we saying? <laughs> <laughs> Please let me be younger. <laughs> Fountain of youth, where are you? <laughs> yeah, so so really, I, I wasn't um, slapped on the head by a two by four, but I did have a lot of interesting things come up. And one of them was being in social work when I was pregnant mm. resulted in those questions. And so I thought, well, I, I need to find a course. I, I was reading books, but there wasn't a lot of parenting books out there. This was over 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, there wasn't a lot of parenting books out. So I finally found a course actually right where I live, um, which was very nice because you know, and we don't always have things here in Manitoba that are in other <laughs> places. <laughs> and I took the course and I love the course. It was based on Barbara Coloroso and Dr. Stephen Covey and oh, yes. you know, people like that. Yeah. And so I love the course, but I couldn't help but think the way you're teaching it really isn't working. And so I kind of took over the company and I started teaching <laughs> their program for them. And eventually I, I bought the boat. It became my company. But what I discovered, first of all, I discovered I was such a better parent when I was teaching these programs because I was constantly being reminded of what was important, what my goals were as a parent, to use the tools that I was talking about. And, you know, I, and anytime something went really wrong, I would 
calm myself by thinking, all right, so how can you use this as a teachable moment with your kids, but also with, you know, your audiences. Yeah. And, uh, and so that really was what got me into parent education, mm. but then I, I couldn't make money at it. And I thought, all right, I guess I'll take a job. So I got on with the school division, worked there, and uh, my job was to be that bridge between parent and home. And I mm. love, 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 love my job. But I quickly figured out that my health was starting to let me down. Yeah. And I, I, you know what it was? Again, the universe was saying, this is not what you're supposed to be doing. OMG. Do your, <laughs> do your I own yeah, went through business. that too in 04. Oh, wow. So what did, so, the, what did the universe, what, was, what, what did the universe say to you? Well, basically it said that your adrenals are burning out. I didn't know this at the time, mm. but I was just so tired all the time. And I kept feeling like I needed to reach a larger audience, but I didn't know how to do that. And of course, the school division is very particular about who their audience is. And it was actually my boss that said, write a book. I'd love for you mm. to write a book. You're writing these articles for our parenting newsletters, write a book about them. And so that was the universe kind of set it up. I, I came across iUniverse, which is a self-publishing company, yeah. and uh, it just kind of made it happen. It took a couple of years because I was mm -hmm. working at the time, but uh, then wrote my first book, Break Free of Parenting Pressures, and left my secure, regular mm. paycheck job to have my own business and uh, to be able to go out and provide different types of programs to people. You and know, I have to tell you, I, I was looking at a number of different things that you've written, but more importantly, I got to tell you, I was looking at what other people say about what you've written. Now, I got to tell you, here, here's the thing. I've been doing this 14 years. Literally 9,000 books has, have come across my eyes, right? Minimally okay. 9,000. I've never seen testimonials ab about what an individual is doing uh, quite the way that people talk about you. That to me is, remember when I said when we started the show that moms, women, but moms in particular, pretty much been ignored in media and the way that we present solutions to them. What's happening now is you are really filling an enormous gap that so many moms are looking at, and grandmoms, by the way, because if the moms don't want to listen, I got to tell you, the grandmoms are like, you got to be talking to Debbie. So we're going <laughs> to we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking with Debbie about what is it, right, that we give up consciously about our vibrancy what do we give up we know we know in the moment we're in we're not shining the way we we could what do we give it up how do we give it up and how does debbie help moms get it back by standing in her power we'll be right back Hey listeners, would you love to have the most imaginable relationships ever? David Karsher has just finished his breakthrough book, The Seven Spiritual Strategies for Fulfilling Relationships, and he is giving you a copy. Learn to move any important relationship in your life forward like never before. Visit davidkarsher.com slash blessing or transformationtalkradio.com to receive this incredible gift. Once again, that's davidkarsher.com slash blessing. Bree Gibbs is a fourth generation high priestess with the knowledge to raise your vibration and conscious creation. Offering a wide variety of services from goddess light and shamanic healing seminars to private reading sessions, Bree works with you so you too can stand in your own power. Isn't it about time you took your life into your own hands? For more information about Bree's services and products, visit silvergaia.com. That's silvergaia.com. Be unstoppable. Who do executive women count on for up-to-date information on everything from stilettos to being heard in the boardroom? 
To achieve excellence, you must first take control of your life and develop a successful strategy with the unstoppable diva. Tune in to Up or Out with Connie Fife, Mondays 5 p.m. Eastern, as she cuts through the BS to guide you to become bold, connected, and unstoppable. For more information, visit uporout.com. Are you ready to start winning at the game of life? Lynn Brown, host of Get Into It, Winning at the Game of Life, is here to help you reach places and goals that you never thought possible. Lynn is an intuitive healer with a specialized background in financial healing. She combines her intuitive nature and her wholesome approach to financial planning. To learn more about her financial planning services, contact her personally at letter R, letter U, Intuit.com. Hey everyone, this is Dr. Pat. I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world. And she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the archangels, from the ascended masters, from the light beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit The Truth is Funny. Funny.com. A conversation with just me and trust me, I'll give it a chance now. Take my hand, stop, put down the man on the jukebox and then we start to dance. And now I'm singing like, girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like Hey, everybody, welcome back. I'm so thrilled to be introducing all of you uh, to Debbie McCormick, who is literally uh, someone that has tools for each and every one of you out there listening as well as you can tune into her show, and we're going to tell you about that too. But Debbie, before we kind of get back into the conversation, because I know it takes on a life of its own, how can people find out more about you? And also, would you please tell folks about the sisterhood of vibrant, powerful moms? Oh, I would love to. All right. My website is Empowering Energy, and the energy is a little play on words, so it's three letters, N-R-G, so EmpoweringNRG.com, and you can find everything about me there, and including a link to my sisterhood of Vibrant Powerful Moms, which is something that I I had this sudden um, inspiration to create because I'm really a strong believer in the empowerment that arises from women getting together and really supporting each other. We're being reminded of how to do that in a, a kind of non-judgmental way because we've really been well-trained now in, in how to be judgmental of each other and how to try to bring each other down a notch. And it's just a side effect from the society that we're living in. But it's something that we really need to change because when we work together, we can be way more supported by the women in our lives than by anybody else. And I don't mean to minimize your relationship with your partner or anybody, anything else, but this is just a a truism is that women need the support of other women. And so this sisterhood is an opportunity for moms to get together virtually. We'll uh, talk once a week and I have lots of great information to share about parenting, relationships, all that. But I'm really hoping that the sisterhood kind of takes on a life of its own and helps to guide what we're going to talk about in each session. Because amazingly, when that happens, I've done this with live groups, and when it happens, we automatically still cover a lot of the pieces that I had planned on covering. They just come up 
in a different way that people can relate to even more deeply than if I had put it out there. So that's what it is. It's right there on my site, Sisterhood of Vibrant Powerful Moms at EmpoweringEnergy.com. Well, I love what you're talking about because, you know, in the world we live in today, the dynamic world we live in today, we things are now coming up that my mom never could have even imagined. And I would imagine that every day we're faced with different challenges uh, that my mom did when I was younger and her mom did. And, you know, what would you say is the number one thing that you work with women on when it comes to now becoming a vibrant, powerful mom, you know, and standing in your power? What, what are some of the things that you help them realize? You know, one of the first things that comes to mind is helping them to recognize where they're numbing out in life. Mm. And I mean, it's just such a huge deal. And lots of people don't even recognize they're doing it, but they're going on autopilot, which is good in some ways. I mean, when you're driving, for example, you tend to zone out a little bit and know that when you need to, you'll pay attention, right? Yeah. But in life, when we do that a lot, we're not really paying attention to what our goal is, where, you know, as a parent, the kind of parent that you want to be. Instead, you allow maybe your emotions or your day, the stress of your day to determine how you parent that day. And it's not that that's a bad thing if it happened once in a while, but when you're numbing out all the time, when you're going on autopilot all the time, you suddenly wake up years later, look back and go, oh my gosh, how did I get here? Mm. And that's that's not a fun place to be. You realize I never shone my light. I never even turned it on. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I, you know, I want to ask you this. I've heard this and I wonder if it comes up with you as well. Um, we are really hard on ourselves. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's hard to find sometimes when you're in the middle of it, uh, something you're doing right, you know, something that doesn't have to be fixed. So the idea of being perfect just as we are, which you talk about in, in your book, that seems like that is really difficult when you look around and maybe you're not having the best of days. Yes, absolutely. We are our biggest critics. And, you know, just as an example, I worked with a woman who needed to take some time off work due to a significant death in her life. And she felt guilty and embarrassed that she needed to take the time off. I mean, think about that. It, mm. Any one of us as a friend would look at her and say, don't be ridiculous. Like you have just lost someone very dear to you. And there's no reason to be embarrassed. Everybody understands. But that's how she felt. And to her, she was somehow failing because she needed this time. Yeah. And, you know, so when you when you see that kind of thing, and I mean, this happens in much smaller ways all the time where you're second guessing yourself about the parenting that you're doing, or you had a conversation with a teacher and you second guess what you said there or whatever. We do it all the time. We stand up to somebody at work and then we think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, now he's going to be against me all the time. And you know, mm. we, we create a lot more challenges in our life. And so I like to remind people, you are perfect for the role of being you. There is nothing about you that needs to be fixed, nothing about you that is broken. And mm. when you recognize that and really embrace it, then you can start to say, okay, if I'm already perfect, it doesn't mean you have to be perfect because we grow from those mistakes, from those challenges, right? But if I'm already perfect, the rest is just icing. It's, you know, the icing on the cake. It's that extra little bit. And every little bit I do is going to help to make me a better person. But it's not fixing a part of me that's broken. So I love to remind people of that. And I love to remind them that there is no right or wrong way for you to live your journey. You will learn from every little bit of it, no matter how you do it. The question is, how much do you want to enjoy it? Because there is definitely more fun ways to live your yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, w I was just talking with someone before the show and, you know, trying to explain that it's so important to stop and take care of yourself. 
and 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 there's always yeah yeah I will I will do it after I take care of my mom I will do it after I take care of the laundry I will do that right how do you help people break that cycle well there's a lot of different ways and I'm always looking for the tools or strategies that fit that person so mm-hmm. I don't want people listening to think this is the only way to do it. But living in the moment is a perfect example of how you can recharge your batteries, really enjoy whatever it is you're doing in that moment and get way more done. So instead of thinking about all the things you have to do, let's say you have five minutes that you tell your child you'll play with them. And so you sit down to play with them, but you're sitting there thinking, okay, so what am I going to make for supper? Mm. Oh, I should have taken out the meat or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, I, I should have gotten that. I should have done it. Oh, I better phone my husband and tell him to pick this up or whatever. You've got all these things going on in your mind. You're not really present. And so you're not recharging your batteries. You're a little bit scattered. Your child might or might not pick up on that. And yet if you took a timer and set the timer and decided that, all right, for the next five minutes, I am just going to focus on playing cars with my son. (laughs) You would have so much fun. You would walk away when that timer goes feeling really good. Your child will have noticed the difference. It'll, you know, have made this, this huge impact. And now you go about your day. I mean, now you can plan supper and I bet the ideas will come to you more quickly. Things will flow more smoothly just because you tuned in. So. You know what I love about what you just shared? Because now what you're sharing is something that um, I have a friend that does something like that. And she kind of makes it a fun thing for the kids, too. And uh, and what she'll do is I, I think she does it for like 10 minutes or something. I don't know. Um, but what she does is she literally plans it out. When she first told me about it, I thought, wow, that's like having a calendar for your kids. But she said to me, if I don't do that, I have nothing that I'll stop. She says it's hard if I don't make it a game. And the other part of it is she has something that will, will go off, like a little alarm on her phone or something. And that's how she knows not to let her kids down. How important is it? Um, And let's talk about this when we come back. How important is it, this dialogue between ourselves and our children, when it comes to keeping our word, when it comes to keeping our word? Let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking with Debbie about what do we believe and how do those beliefs come to the forefront and how we keep our word. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Just fine before I met you. I drink too much, and that's an issue. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now. 831 277 3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Do you feel that there's a bigger, better life for you? Is there anything holding you back from living the life you were meant to live? If you'd like to find your life's true purpose and calling, join the world's foremost authority on primal spirituality, David Carr Share, in Becoming a Sun Radio, Emotional and Spiritual Intelligence for a Happy, Fulfilling Life. Tune in once a month to Becoming a Sun Radio with David Carr Share on the Dr. Pat Show and Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit davidcarshare.com today. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformations talk radio what if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets mysteries and magic of life 
Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit glennarice.com. Want to help reduce the divisiveness in our world? Each year, the School for Esoteric Studies holds a subjective group conference. This year, our focus is on unity and diversity, the science of right human relations. From April till June, we will meditate together, study relevant writings, and share practical strategies for improving how we relate with each other. Join us to help build inclusive communities. Check on our subjective group conference at esotericstudies.net. That's the school for esoteric studies at esotericstudies.net. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Pat. For more information about us, go to the Dr. Pat Show or Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, for more information about Debbie, we're going to also remind you again how you can plug into Sisterhood of Vibrant Powerful Moms. And that is a virtual opportunity to get together with Debbie. Uh, but also there are many, many things on her website uh, as well as, you know, this, her, uh, the announcement of her upcoming show. So, you, you know, Debbie, if you don't mind, take a minute and tell folks about all of the above. Okay. Well, the sisterhood link is right on my website, empoweringnrg.com. That's three letters, NRG. And, uh, and it's right there. And it's, it is about getting together, creating that sisterhood and helping each other through mostly the form uh, formulative parenting years, but really, if your child is 20, like mine is, and mm-hmm. you feel it'd be beneficial to you, it's still your group. So <laughs> come on over and we will talk about it to make sure it's a good fit for you. So that's the sisterhood. I am thrilled that my uh, show, Vibrant Powerful Moms, is going to be uh, broadcasting here on Transformation Talk Radio on starting Monday, March 27th, uh, 2017 at 2.30 p.m. Pacific. So I'm absolutely thrilled about that. It is uh, an opportunity where I share a lot of information. Some of it is kind of generic, like how do you differentiate between your ego and your higher self? And how do you ask your higher self to be in charge? And what does that mean? And who's the inner critic? And how does that differ from inner wisdom? So it's it's kind of generic information, whereas with the sisterhood, we're going to go a lot deeper into your actual personal uh, challenges and, and things like that. But uh, And I also will interview people on my show that I think will be of interest to you. And I've been doing interviews just this week, and they're uh, wonderful. I've been having a lot of fun with them and learning a lot of great stuff. So there's those two options. And then on my website, on my products page, you will find lots of uh, books that I've written. I've written Standing in Your Power, which is um, about living your life fully awake. And so it really is a great great way to get a lot of the information I talk about with ways to help you actually take a stand. I love <laughs> and it. So yeah, and so it has lots of little oh my goddess moments in it. <laughs> and uh, it, there's a story running through it. So it's a very fun book. I loved writing it. And I, I think I might do another one similar to that just because I had so much fun with it. <laughs> and also my, my book Break Free of Parenting Pressures, which focuses on parenting specifically. And you know, what's in your parent pack, how to get there, how does it help you and, and so on. So those are a few of the things that I have available. Well, and this is really goes back to what we started to talk about earlier, and that is your commitment to to really helping, you know, uh, women, moms become vibrant in their lives. You know, that the fact that you are a mom, um, I think for a lot of folks, we believe we have to settle. And that's what we're talking about now is what are some of the beliefs we carry, right? Um, And, you know, I don't know about you, but I have found sometimes if we carry a certain belief, then it also makes it harder 
to keep our commitments. And I don't know why I find that those go hand in hand, but at some level, there's got to be a belief that either is going to help people or a series of beliefs going to help them, you know, get to that vibrant place or not. How do beliefs help uh, affect our parenting, Debbie? Beliefs are such a huge part of our life, right? I'm sure mm. most of your listeners have already heard before that your beliefs create your reality. Mm. And that is true in so many ways. And when you add in the idea that whatever you focus on expands, which I think we're going to talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. it, it just makes it an even bigger deal. Because if your child goes to school and gets in trouble and they phone home and then your child comes home and, and you're upset with your child because the school had to call you and you have a belief that that means you're a bad kid and your belief that, you know, that that if you are a bad kid, that you're going to end up being a, a dropout or you know, mm, you're not going to be right. successful. And a lot of these beliefs are running in the background. We're not even aware of them. They're, they become part of our subconscious mind programming. And that has such a huge influence on how you behave, how you react. And then as a parent, you can get so upset with yourself because you think, I promised that I would never threaten my child. And I just did. Why? Mm. How come? And lots of people will joke and say, well, I teleported my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and they're actually, in a way, not far off. I'm not blaming the mother here at all. Right. But your family of origin does have a huge influence on the way you parent. And just becoming aware of that and understanding the structure that you were raised in can really help you to start recognizing what little things you might have to change or adapt to, to reach your parenting goals. Because the things that are in your toolbox from your family of origin, they're not going to help you get there. And just to, to clarify, that family of origin doesn't have to be a traditional family structure. Wherever you were raised, whoever was in charge of raising you, right. that had a huge influence on you. So going back to your original question about um, commitment to kids and, and keeping your word with kids, I actually talk about the game of give and take in relationship building. And making promises to kids, for example, is very important. It is part of building trust and about recognizing that you're there for them. You want to do special things for them. Keeping those promises is a really big uh, um, deposit. In yeah, it is. Relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. But sometimes we make a commitment. I'll take you to the zoo Saturday and your child right. gets all excited and then you get called into work and you really need the money or you know that you'll, you know, drop down in status if you don't. Mm -hmm. And so you feel like you have to work. And so that's not the end of the world. If you say to your child that, you know what? I thought I'd be able to take you to the zoo and now I'm not able to. And I am so sorry. In fact, I'm going to let you figure out how I can make it up to you. Now, I love really, that. Well, and a really young child will struggle with that, but you can help them with it. You can I love say, that. <laughs> so, and then, of course, you have to be willing to accept what they put out. You might have to massage it a little bit if it's unrealistic, right? But you help them to learn that it this is a game of give and take. Every relationship is. And the more we give, the stronger the relationship becomes. And the more we take, the weaker it becomes. So we want to give way more than we take. So yeah. one quick note of caution yeah. is really become aware of when you say promises that everybody knows you cannot possibly promise to keep. Like, I'll never, ever leave you. Mommy's not going to die. Oh, right, right, right. I mean, right. I know you want to make them feel better, but kids know, intuitively know that that's not a promise you can keep. And should something, heaven forbid, happen to you, now your child is really in a place of what the heck. Right. You know, I can't right. trust anybody. So stay away from those kinds of promises and instead word them, you know, in another way that mommy plans to be with you your whole life. You know, yeah, that kind of thing or whatever, whatever makes sense for you. But to have it as more of a conversation rather than saying, I promise, you know, that I'll I'll be here on time. You can't right. even really promise that I will do my best to be there on time. Absolutely.
So yeah, yeah. And what you're talking about too is those beliefs, they we don't realize it at the time, but they get passed on. Oh, Can yes. you talk about that for a little bit? Yes. In my book, Break Free of Parenting Pressures, I talk about inheriting beliefs. And mm -hmm. I share a story about having a real Christmas tree. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I really thought I had to have a real Christmas tree because that's what made Christmas special. And without it, I was somehow letting down the Christmas gods. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You know, and it wasn't until my husband and I went out and we got a tree. We, you know, it just wasn't a great experience. The tree fell over. We had a new puppy, pulled it over and the water got all over the place. And as the tree thawed out, it smelled like pee. And, you know, it was just yeah. a lot of problems <laughs> that I realized, why am I doing this to myself? I don't really like the idea of cutting down a tree just to put it in my house and decorate it. It doesn't fit with who I am. But I didn't even know that belief was there. So that's a real simple example of a belief that I inherited and I didn't know that I had inherited it. And so a lot of what I do, and, and it's a, a big part of any program that people take with me, is we'll help them to unveil some of their beliefs and learn how to challenge those beliefs and how to pick out which ones are limiting beliefs. You know, like I can't remember names. That's a limiting right. belief, right? Right. And, uh, and so becoming aware of that and then learning different ways that you can change that um, is, is a really important part of living your life fully awake. So. Yeah, I love this because, and I love this so much, I think we're going to skip the break, Benny, because we've got lot, lots more to talk about here. Um, but this is really a level of mindfulness, if we could talk about it for a minute. Um, sure. And what I mean by that is, you know, in the middle of your day, and literally, I was just on the phone with someone earlier today, and I, and I, and I had to say, listen, honey, you have to hit the pause button here. You know, P-A-U-S-E, that button, not P-A-W-S. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just, can we just hit the button and breathe for a minute before we open up our mouths anymore and we say something that we don't even remember we're saying? But isn't that our beliefs come through us, not just by actions, but don't they also come through words? Oh, absolutely they do. And if you've ever read or listened to Dr. Bruce Lipton, yeah. I mean, he talks about that, about that programming that's that's there. I mean, it's it's really established before we're seven years old, right? Lots of people use five years old, but he uses seven and I like to to go with what he says. Yeah. Um, those first seven years of life is where that programming is being created. But then once it's created, it's running in the background, just like in your computer as all these mm -hmm. things running in the background, you don't even know they're there. So when somebody calls you on it, you know, oh, there you go. Let's say you have a program for avoiding things. When things go south, you like to run and hide. You just want to avoid them. You won't talk to people if you're mad at them. That's a pattern for you. And mm. someone might say to you, well, there you go, avoiding again. And your child or whoever, by you will look at them and you'll say, what do you mean? I'm not avoiding anything. Like, what do you know? Just And then you don't talk to that person because <laughs> you're <laughs> avoiding. But um, what I, I got myself a little bit mixed up there because the other piece of that is that often our kids will pick up on that. So now they have a pattern of avoiding and you'll right. go, I don't understand. He won't go to school and he says there's nothing wrong at school, but he's sick every day or he's pretending to be sick and I just don't understand what's going on. And a well-meaning friend or therapist might say, well, perhaps he's avoiding mm. something at school because that could be a pattern of his. And as they dig deeper into that, the parent starts to realize too that they have this pattern. So it's a program they don't even know is running. It's just well, a part of who they are. And I wanted to talk with you about that because, you know, Debbie, you're so good at what you do. And you make this sound so easy for people to, first of all, engage. I mean, you know, this is the work that you do and the gatherings that you have. And now with our digital connection, right, the world we live in today, you know, these are tools where moms can show up and work with you without guilt and without shame. And that I think is one of the greatest gifts in what you do. You simply honor the mom and the journey. I think it's beautiful. 
Oh, thank you. And that is exactly what I try to do because I don't think there should be any stigma around needing help, wanting to learn new things, whether it be about parenting, about relationship building, about your own self-awareness, self-care, mm -hmm. these kinds of things. We feel often like there's some kind of stigma that we should know naturally how to do these things. We shouldn't need help because it doesn't look like anybody else needs help. And I always tell people, why are you comparing your insides to their outsides? Because right. if I cut you open right now and we looked, there's no similarity between your inside and their outside. So it, it's just not even fair to compare yourself to others. And it we do so much better when we believe in ourselves. And mm -hmm. instead of feeling shame or blame, which are all ego things, instead we come from a place of compassion. And we sort of say, okay, so I am doing the best I can with what I know in this moment in time. And how do I move a step forward? What do I, I do? I love it. Yeah, I want to just uh, tell everyone again that you can go uh, uh, to Debbie's website. But also, you know, what if people want to give you a call? What, how, tell folks the best way they can contact you directly. I, in the website, the phone number, whatever, all of the above. <laughs> Okay. Well, the website is actually the best way to contact mm -hmm. me because um, it, it tends to be monitored a little bit more. So mm -hmm. that's empowering NRG, three letters, NRG.com. And um, you can phone me. My cell phone is up there. And so I don't mind sharing that, but I have to tell you, it turns out I am not great at monitoring my cell phone. <laughs> right. I, I, I had a phone for a while that stopped making noise, even when it was turned on full volume. And uh, that kind of got me out of any habit of even checking <laughs> my phone. And so that's not the best way to reach me. But if you want to send me an email, um, when I see your email, we can set up a time to chat. And my IT person is actually putting a calendar up on my website right away that um, people will be able to use to just say, if, even if they want to just chat with me for a little while, I'm happy to call them. I would love to talk to them. I just, you know, if they phone me, they might not get me. Awesome. So. Good. I, you know, I just wanted folks to know that, you know, this is the way and, and, and all you all out there, you know, you just bring these up on your smartphone because moms do have the largest percentage of one purchasing and owning smartphones, but being plugged in. Um, I, I was reading something and, and I want to just get to it because it has to do with what we can manifest better parents, better kids. Um, that took a really long time for both myself, my siblings to really wrap our minds around. But today I look back at that and I think about some of the things my mom did that are clearly embedded in who I am today. Please tell us what your experience with this is and what you've been able to, to help uh, moms with. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a little floored because I'm not sure, um, but Better Parents, Better Kids was the name of that company that mm -hmm. I became involved with and ended up taking over. Okay. <laughs> and I never really liked the name because it insinuated that if you were a better parent, you would have better kids. Right. And that, that is a judgment. <gasps> Right? right. I'm not I'm not for judgment. So I added in better parents and better kids to at least right. make it an all inclusive. <laughs> so it's funny <laughs> that, that you would bring that up. But I think that company has been rejuvenated by someone else. So if you find better parents, better kids out there, that's not me right. <laughs> anymore. Well, However, well, the that's message why I there bring up the distinction because yes. better parents and better kids, this is really the end game though. It is. It is. And you know what? I have to say that you can do so many things right. And I put that right in air quotes, right? Because you can do so many things right as a parent and you can still end up with a child whose journey does not feel right to you. And that is not a sign that you have messed up. That is 
part of your journey. That is part of your child's journey. We don't get to choose what our child's journey is. We Mm. can just be there to support them. And I always like to say to people, your relationship with your kids is more important than anything else, than their marks in school, than the people they hang out with, whatever. That relationship is key because that's what's going to make a difference. When you're older and you want your kids to want to spend time with you, that's what will make the difference. If you want to be involved with your grandkids, that relationship is what will make the difference. And you can still have a lot of say in what they do and who they are, but in this way, you're doing it without saying you must. You must do it my way or else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, none of us like to be told what to do. Uh, well, right. I mean, clearly we don't. I'm, and, you know, the thing that is so important in making sure everyone knows about the work that you do is you help us understand what the conscious and subconscious uh, things are that may be uh, having us compromise on our lives, right? I mean, isn't that what limiting beliefs are at some level? They're compromises in some sense. Yes, and that's where we give our power away so often when you say things like, I have no choice, mm. I have to do this. You are giving your power away because there always is a choice. You might not like the other choices, they might not <laughs> seem like viable options, but there is always a choice. So rather than give your power away by by saying something like that, just say, I choose to follow this route. This is what mm-hmm. I think would be best for me right now, given you know the circumstances, this is what I think I need to do. Yeah. And, you know, you also talk with folks about where we're going to put our energy, because a lot of times we don't realize that where we put our energy uh, does count. You know, how often have you heard folks say, you know what, it doesn't matter. Oh, but it does, I, right? I sometimes say it too. And you're right, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Everything matters. <laughs> and I don't say that to put pressure on people, but it absolutely makes a difference. And uh, do we have time for me to share a real quick tool? Yes, people please. Okay, yes. so I like to talk about how you can take extraordinary moments, little moments in your life and help that to create an extraordinary life. Because the reality is those things that uh, feel yucky to us tend Mm -hmm. to be kind of like Velcro in our brain. Okay. Uh, Richard, Rick Hansen talks about that in his book, Hardwiring Happiness. Mm -hmm. So they stick to our brain, things that are dangerous, that are painful, that are bad, we'd call them. And then all the good things, those little pleasurable moments, they just zip through like Teflon because it wasn't felt for survival purposes that we needed to have those things stick in our brain. So this little tool is just to help you take those pleasurable moments and secure them in so that you can use them to accumulate a much better day. So it's three simple little things. N-E-T, I call it net, not Annette anymore because (laughs) people kept thinking it was a person. But (laughs) net is first notice whatever it is that's pleasurable. And that can be the sun hitting your face, sitting down with a cup of tea, laughing with your child, sharing a story with a friend, anything that feels good. The E is to really expand that emotion. Figure out where it is in your body if you can focus on it and make it grow bigger. The more you practice this, the easier it will become. And that emotion of whatever you're feeling, relaxation, contentment, happiness will grow. And then the T of net is to tie it down with thoughts because really that's what we do with our negative experiences. We think about it over and over again and we tie it in securely with the emotion and our thoughts. Here, we want to tie down these positive experiences thinking, oh, I love my life. I'm so glad I came out here at lunch to, you know, for the sunshine on my face. I'm Mm. so happy to be here. What a great day, whatever little Mm. positive thoughts that you tie it down and when you do those three things really notice expand the emotion tie it down you are creating a much stronger memory of that pleasurable moment and the more you practice this the more you will attract those kinds of experiences to you and when you look back on your day instead of it being oh it wasn't a very good day I was late for work and this happened I spilled coffee blah 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 you'll stop and you'll go, you know what? It was actually a pretty good day because of all those extraordinary little moments that you held on to. Oh my gosh. Simple little tool I love. 
Well, Debbie, thank you so much for today. I want to make sure you mention again the start of your show, the time, all of the above, and thank you for all that you do. Oh, you're, thank you so much. Um, my show starts, it's Vibrant Powerful Moms, and it's on Transformation Talk Radio, March 27th, that's Monday, 2017, 2.30 p.m. Pacific. And um, I'm, I'm just thrilled that it's going to be there. The Sisterhood of Vibrant Powerful Moms, you can get off my website at NRG. Dot com. Uh, you can go there. We will have a sort of official launch April the 10th. So if you can get there before then, but it's going to be kind of an ongoing thing. So if you don't get there now, that's okay. If you're listening to this later, you can go there then. And all of my books and products and different things to help support parents can all be found on my product page at my site, empoweringenergy.com. Wow. Thank you so very much. One quick last question, personal message. What would you like to leave us with? You know, I have to go back to that same message we did mention before, and that is you are absolutely perfect at the mm -hmm. role of being you. You are the perfect person to parent your child. And if you can let go of any idea that that means you have to be perfect and instead come to each day with that gratitude and compassion and love for life, you will find that things do start to flow. And even when things go wrong, you'll still feel like, you know what, I can handle this. Your resiliency will shine through as a result. I love it. Thank you so much for all that you do. I want to thank all of you for tuning us. Yeah, tuning us in and turning us on. And don't forget, we got another hour coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. We'll see you next time. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.